Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here with us today. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Z, and I'm from Wonderspark Puppets, and I'm so happy to be here today to kick off La Mama Kids Online Thursday series. That's right. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. will be something awesome for you and your family at home to enjoy together. It might be a workshop. It might be a show. So every Thursday, tune in here at La Mama and La Mama Kids online to check out all the amazing things that are going to be happening. So today, I'm going to be doing something really special with all of you. I am going to be making this really adorable mouse puppet with you today and you can make him out of construction paper or if you have felt at home you can also make him out of felt and it's a very simple pattern and if you look at the comments or the description of this video you should be able to see the link to the pattern to be able to download it so let's go ahead and get started okay can you say hi <laughs> it's a very simple, fun puppet to make. All right. So let me get my workspace together and we'll go over the materials list. So for today's project, we are going to need two colors of either construction paper or felt, some yarn, some tape, a pencil, a black marker, scissors, and if you're using felt, make sure that the scissors are sharp scissors so that they cut through the felt easily. And you might want to ask an adult to help you with that. And our pattern. This is our pattern right here, and this is what it looks like. Okay, Oop, upside down, there we go. This is our pattern right here. And also, if you wanna be extra fancy, you could use some pom-poms and some googly eyes, but it is not uh, necessary in order to make this puppet. Okay, so I have most of what I need up here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pattern and I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out my pattern. Now you're gonna see some dotted lines here. Don't worry about that, but also make sure that you cut it in a way that you can still see the dotted lines, okay? See how I'm not cutting quite exactly on that line so I can still see that that was my dotted line. And then when I get to the rest of it, I can cut on the line, all right? Today is Thursday. I hope everybody has been having a really nice Thursday today. There was a big rainstorm here in New York City earlier but you know what you guys the sun is out and you know what always happens after a rainstorm and the sun comes out a rainbow so I'm wondering if I look out this window in a few minutes if I might see a rainbow it's quite possible so I have my first piece and let's not forget this other piece over here we're gonna cut that out too whenever there's something kind of small or tiny I always do a big cut first and then I do my more intricate cutting. So I did my big cut. I'm gonna save that scrap for something else later. We've been doing a lot of work with our scrap paper lately. Our recycling bin is not as full because we keep using all of our recyclables for all sorts of interesting craft projects and fun ideas. I wonder what kind of fun things you guys have been making at home with some of the things that you're finding around your house. All right, we're almost done cutting out our pattern. Now we have this little shape, this is gonna be our ear, and we have this shape right here, and this is gonna be our mouse body. But the last thing that we wanna do is cut out these two holes, okay? So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bend my pattern just a little bit and do a tiny little snip right there, and I'm gonna do it again on this hole because cutting holes in paper is hard, but it's even harder if you don't have a starting place. So I have this little starting spot right here, and then I'm just gonna put my scissors in and then carefully cut around. And again, if you need an adult's help for this, do it. Go ahead, ask your adult for help. 
because this is a little tricky, I will admit. Cutting holes in paper is tricky. Some people even have like hole punches, which are awesome, but I know that that would be fancy. And a lot of us don't have that kind of thing at home. And, um, or if we do have that kind of thing, maybe we don't have it at home right now. Maybe it's in our office drawer or desk drawer. So we're gonna work with what we have. And see, I'm just cutting out the holes right here. And you know what? We are not trying for perfection here. We are just trying to, good enough. Good enough is great right now. So look at that. We have our pattern cut out with the two holes cut out and we have our little ear cut out. So now we're going to grab our construction paper. Now I'm gonna make the pattern today in construction paper, but if you have felt, this pattern will work really well with felt as, as well, okay? That little gray mouse that I showed you, he was made out of felt. And so you do the same thing with the felt that I'm doing with the construction paper. So we're gonna take our paper and we're gonna fold it in half this way, all right? So we have a nice fold right in the middle of our paper, see that? And now, remember that dotted line that we didn't wanna make go away? We're gonna line that up with the fold of our paper. That's usually what a dotted line means on a pattern is that there's a fold. So we're gonna line that up with our fold and now we're gonna take our pencil and trace. And the thing with tracing is that you always wanna make sure you have just enough pressure on the thing that you're holding so that your pencil can do the work. I know my son, who is seven, is learning a lot about tracing this week. There's a lot of tracing in his homework right now that he's been doing from his school. And the other thing that I'm tracing, not just around the outside of the pattern here, but also I trace the inside of these holes, okay? So when I take it off, I did not do this because the bend line is, is my line, all right? I don't need to trace right there because I can see where it starts right here and starts right here. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this out, but I'm gonna cut it on the bend, right? So I'm actually cutting two pieces of construction paper at the same time because I bent it in half. So here we go. My mouse today is gonna be yellow because I thought that was a very springy kind of color. Where we are in New York City, the trees are all in full bloom right now. And they really are just beautiful, especially the cherry blossoms, the magnolia trees. They are so pretty right now. And all the flowers are coming up. Have any of you guys been seeing any of the flowers in your neighborhood? We've been seeing a lot of daffodils, which are the yellow flowers. Now, you know what I like to do in order to make um, because we're gonna cut these holes out. I like to make a little poke with my pencil into the paper. Because then again, it gives your scissors a starting point, right? So we poked our holes into the scissors. And this pattern is gonna fit little kid's hands better than it's gonna fit an adult's hands. If you are an adult and you are making this mouse or you just have bigger hands, make these holes bigger, customize it so that it's a good fit for you, okay? I made this after uh, kind of measuring out my kid's hands. I have two boys, one is four and a half and the other is seven. And they helped me put this pattern together. Thank you, Leaf and Finn, for helping me. So again, this is a tricky part. I know cutting a hole into paper is tricky. So if you need an adult's help, Go ahead and ask, ask that adult to help you with some scissors. All right, I have two holes cut out, but then ah, my other side doesn't have any holes, oh no. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna keep it folded down. I'm gonna trace the holes I just cut out with my pencil so that they're perfectly lined up on the other side. 
And then same thing, remember how we take and we poked a hole? There's one hole, there's a second hole. Now my scissor has a starting point, right? So now I'm just gonna poke my scissors in and snip around those holes, okay? It's a lot of cutting today and tracing. And if you're doing this with fabric, it's the same idea. You just wanna make sure that you use nice sharp scissors or else it can be very frustrating if you have dull scissors and you're trying to cut felt or some kind of thicker fabric. So make sure that you're using some nice sharp scissors. All right, we're just about done. Oop, there we go. Okay, now we have our mouse body all cut out and what we want is to make some mouse ears too. So if you're using construction paper, which I am today, take your second color. I'm gonna use pink, because I thought that would be really cute. And I'm gonna trace two ears. So here we go. Here is ear number one. We are so excited to be doing this workshop today for La Mama. We love the La Mama Theater and everybody in that La Mama team. And I should really say the La Mama family because it really is a family over there. You know, if you're watching this and you're in New York City, you must know about how amazing La Mama is and the programming that they present throughout the year in their spaces is just so wonderful and has such an amazing reach to so many different audiences. So if you're not already supporting La Mama, I really want to encourage you to go to their website and consider making a donation if you can to help keep them viable while we navigate all, everything that's happening right now. So what I just did is I traced my two ears and now I'm going to cut them out with my scissors. Okay, again, intricate cuts, which means fancy cuts. I don't do fancy cuts on big pieces. I cut them out, I make them smaller, and then I do my fancy cutting. Now you might have seen that there was a dotted line on that pattern. Did you notice that? Does anybody remember what a dotted line on a pattern usually means? It means a fold or bend. Yes, so get ready because we are going to bend these ears right about where that dotted line was. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're cutting out our ears. Just like that. Okay, I have all these little scraps. I wonder if I could make a collage out of those later. I don't know, I'm gonna think about that. Now, we're gonna take our ear pattern again and line it right back up. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna shift it to the side just a little bit and make a little mark where that dotted line was. And I'm gonna do it to the other side too. Just shift it over just a tiny little bit and make a little mark. And that is where I'm gonna fold my ear. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna fold my ear right there, just like that. Okay, I have my nice little ear tab. And that's gonna give me a spot to be able to tape it or to glue stick it onto my mouse body. So let's do that with the other one. We're gonna use the same pattern because it's the same shape. Line it up on there, scoot it over just the tiniest little bit and make a little mark right where that dotted line was. And then same thing, other side, scoot it over just a little bit and make a little mark. And now we see those two marks. We're gonna try to line it up. And again, it does not have to be perfect, but good enough is great. We're just gonna bend it over so that it's about the same as the other one, okay? All right, so we have two ears and we have a mouse body. Let's attach some ears. So I'm gonna attach my ear. You see that? Right about there, okay? It's like diagonal up from 
the front leg but it's not too close to the top of the face because we want to give some room to put in some eyes and the nose and stuff. So this little tab right here is where we're going to put our tape. So I have some tape here. I'm going to take a piece of my clear tape and then I'm going to tape that tab that we bent right there. Look at that. We have our cute little mouse here. Now let's do that on the other side. And sometimes, you know what I like to do is kind of look at it from above and make sure, like try to line it up so that it's just about the same. That's right about there. I'm gonna open it up. I see my little fold. I'm gonna take a piece of tape and I'm gonna tape it right there on my fold and fold it back. Look! Two little mouse ears. Now, my little mouse needs a face. I happen to have some googly eyes here because I have this whole bin of googly eyes because, you know, puppeteer, I have a bin of googly eyes. But if you do not have googly eyes in your craft bin, it's okay. Just draw two black marker eyes. In fact, I think, yes, I, oh no, I didn't. I thought I drew them on this one. I did not, but I drew a nose and a mouth on this one, which is what I'm going to do on this one as well. But you could easily have this be a black marker eye as well. So let's take off two eyes. Now the trick with these self-sticking eyes is sometimes the backs don't want to come off, but we'll see if they're going to cooperate today. Oh, that one was easy. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to put it right about there. See that? Still gives me enough room for a nose and a little mouth. And I'm going to give him some whiskers today too. My other mouse didn't have whiskers. I think, I think my mouse needs whiskers today. All right, and I have my other eye. And again, I like to look at it from above and just try to line it up a little bit so that the eyes are about in the same spot. So now I have two little eyes just like that. And now I'm going to take my marker. You can use any color that you want. Again, there is no rules about what color your mouse should be, what color the nose should be. My mouse's nose is going to be a little black nose. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And I just held it up for myself so I could see where, how far did I go on that side? Okay, I went that far, I drew a little line there, and now I'm going to color in the rest of that. And now, let's give them a little smile. See? And I'll give them a little smile on the other side too. A little happy mouse, my little spring mouse. And I'm going to give him some whiskers. Because I just realized my mouse didn't have whiskers. So I have a little mouse with some whiskers now, too. All right. And the last thing that my mouse needs is a tail. Now, if you are doing the ears out of felt, if you're fancy and you have felt at home, you just cut out the same ear and you would sew on the, uh, the ear or you could glue it on as well onto the back here. But sewing is nice because then you don't have any crunchy bits. Okay, and I would hand sew the ears on. Um, and then what you can do also is you can sew, if this is for a child to wear, uh, or somebody with very small hands, you can sew this shut. And then with the felt puppet, it's a full puppet all the way around. All right. The last thing we're gonna do is a tail, okay? I like to use um, yarn for my tails. If you don't have yarn at home, you could use string. And you know what my favorite thing to do with tails is, is to braid it. So I'm gonna use three pieces of yarn. So I just measured out some yarn, three equal pieces. I'm gonna tie one end Now you don't have to be fancy and braid it, but I really like braiding. 
there's something really meditative about it like it makes me feel good and happy and like calm and I just put my tape over the end of the braid right there because it's going to weight it down for me so that it doesn't move on me. You can also take a piece of tape and tape it down. Then you want to separate out your three strands. And then braiding is so fun because it's like swapping out. It's like the left one wants to be in the middle and then the right one wants to be middle. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you take the one on the right and you it says, I want to be in the middle. And then the one on the left says, no, 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 I want to be in the middle. And then the one on the right says, no, 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 me. And then the one on the left says, no, me. And then you keep doing that, swapping out who wants to be in the middle. First it's right, then it's left, then it's right, then it's left. And you could do a very tight braid or a very loose braid. It looks like I'm going to do a very loose braid today. And it doesn't have to be super long. I think that's as long as I want mine to be. And now I'm just going to make a knot at the end. If you don't know how to braid or make a knot, it's okay. You can just use one piece of string. You can even use a rubber band. Those are great for tails. You cut a rubber band in half and you can use that as a tail. And now I'm going to cut my end. And this is going to be the end, the actual end of my tail for my mouse that you'll see. So you know what I like to do is I like to make it a little uneven so that it looks a little bit more like the mouse has had some some life instances. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the tail got caught up in some things, but all the ends aren't completely even and perfect, which I like. Now I'm gonna take the other end of my tail. I'm gonna put it on the inside of my puppet right here with the knot just on the inside and I'm going to take another piece of tape and I'm just going to tape that right on the inside. And I'm going to do two pieces because sometimes tails get stuck on things. We don't have tails but I've I've heard from my uh, my animal friends who have tails that uh, they get stuck on things and I cut off the excess right there and now we have our adorable little construction paper mouse. And if you make this puppet, we want to see it. So make sure that you post a comment with a picture in the comments of this video. It doesn't fit my hand so well because again, I'm an adult, <laughs> but I promise you that it will fit your uh, hand if you're a little one, or you can make the holes bigger for your hand, but your little mouse can climb up your leg. And what's so fun too is that when you move your fingers, it has this really great little squirrely action with its, with its head. So I hope that you all enjoyed making this puppet with me today. I really enjoyed making it with you. And again, I want to remind everybody to, to check out La Mama's website for all of the really wonderful things that they have coming up. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., they're going to be doing some amazing programming for you. And in fact, next Thursday, Wonder Spark Puppets, which is the company that I have with my husband, Chad Williams, uh, we will be performing a puppet show for you next Thursday. It's the case of the missing matzah. So we're celebrating Passover and we want to make sure to celebrate with all of you. So make sure to tune in next Thursday, 4 p.m. for the Case of the Missing Matzah Puppet Show. We also want to give a shout out to Astoria Bookshop who does their readings and live, uh, live book readings with Miss Gina on Thursdays. Check out their Instagram feed. And also, if you're interested in knowing more about Wonderspark Puppets, uh, you can find us at wondersparkpuppets.com. Uh, we do puppet shows all over uh, New York City and beyond. And now we're doing puppet shows online. So you can find things from us uh, every day. Um, we're doing puppet DIYs each day at 4 p.m. on our Facebook page and on YouTube as well. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, we're doing puppet DIYs at 10 a.m. And every Friday, we're doing a live puppet show as well. So you can find different ways to support the work that we're doing on our website. And then also, again, if you love and cherish venues like La Mama as much as we do, please make sure to go to lamama.org and find uh, a link there to donate and support to help make sure that La Mama can continue providing 
providing amazing content uh, like the content that you're seeing today. So we want to thank you so much for uh, having us. Uh, <laughs> we want to thank you so much for um, watching this DIY workshop today. Again, my name is Z, and I'm from Water Spark Puppets. And have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. I don't know how to say goodbye. Oh, here, finish. <laughs> bye.